Hi everyone, it's me, Eric, from the Taiwan Institute of Economic Research. Within your company's financial planning, the income statement will be one of three important financial statements used for reporting a company's financial performance over a specific accounting period. The other two key statements are the balance sheet, which shows the company's assets, liability, and equity at a specific point in time, and the statement of cash flow, which describes the cash inflow and outflow of the business. In this video, we'll be going over what the income statement is, the elements that go into it, how to prepare an income statement, and why this is important when you are fundraising. The income statement, which is also known as the profit and loss statement, indicates how the revenues are transformed into the net income or net profit and helps you to understand the financial health of your business. It does this by providing valuable insights into a company's operations, the efficiency of its management, underperforming sectors, and its performance relative to industry peers. As we mentioned just a few seconds ago, this document will showcase your company's financial performance within a set time period. So, in order to put your income statement together, what do you need to include? There are four key elements, revenues, gains, expenses, and losses. Your revenue will be made up of the operating revenue, which is income generated from your primary business activities, and also non-operating revenue, which will be income that is generated through secondary sources. For example, a SaaS company's operating revenue will be the subscription fees collected from users of their software. Or, if you are a retailer, this will come from the sales of your product. Examples of non-operating revenue can be the accruing interest you earned from capital in your business bank account or even rental income if your business has property. Next, we can look at gains. Gains or other income is made up of the net money made from other activities, like the sales of long-term assets. This includes net income realized from one-time non-business activities, such as a company selling its old computers. This would also constitute gains made from the sales of investments, and also gains as a result of a legal settlement too, although we hope that you will not be involved in disputes resulting in such gains. Up next is the primary operating expense. This would include all expenses incurring from earning the normal operating revenue, which is linked to the primary activity of the business items such as the cost of goods sold, COGS, administrative expenses, depreciation, or amortization, and research and development, R&D expenses, would all count. Other critical items that make up the list are employee wages, sales commissions, and expenses for utilities, like electricity, water, rent, and transportation. Apart from the primary operating expenses, we will also have an include the secondary activity expense. These are expenses linked to non-core business activities, like the interest you paid on loan money. On the other hand, a business can also incur losses as expenses. All expenses that go toward a loss-making sale of long-term assets one time, or any other unusual costs or expenses towards losses would all count toward a losses category. One thing that you may have noticed from this section is the categorization of primary and secondary revenue and expenses. This is because while the primary numbers are an indication of how well the core business is doing, the investor looking at your company would also be interested to know how adept the business and management team are at handling ad hoc situations and non-core activities. For example, 
if a startup is getting an unusually large income as a result of interest from money in the bank, that could be an indicator that cash is not being utilized as well as it could be or to its full potential. It could have maybe allocated this cash to increase production, focus on more marketing, or attempt to acquire new users. This is not to say you always need to spend whole amount of money, but you better be prepared to explain to the investor the logic and rationale behind your approach. Now that you have the key elements of what will go into the income statement, the totality of it will come down to this formula. Net income is equal to total revenue plus gains minus total expenses plus losses. You need to be confident and know how your business is going to this number, just as an investor would like you to be. When you put all this together, it gives the investor an immediate picture of how your business is running. Depending on their experience, they will compare it with benchmarks from similar companies or companies in the same industry to get an idea of the health of your business. In addition to asking for and seeing how your business is, the investor will also want to know how the business will be. So in the next lesson, we will look at how to prepare your financial forecast. This brings an end to the lesson of income statement. You should now know what items will go in there and why they belong in each category. The next lesson in this series will be the preparation of your financial forecast. See you soon. Thank <laughs> you.